for the attendees who have registered this series for the first time uh, let me introduce our institute this institute is jis institute of advanced studies and research in short jis iasr kolkata this newly formed institute was established about uh, about uh, one year ago as a constituent of jis group and jis university under the flagship of jis group the prime objective of our institute is to undertake and promote translational research in the field of computer science health science and technology and interdisciplinary disciplinary sciences that include uh, material science polymer sensor technology and presently we are offering mainly postgraduate courses as well as phd on the above areas this institute is growing since its inception under the eminent leadership of our director professor ajay kumar ray we have a strong group of exceptionally talented and experienced faculty members in our institute so on behalf of our institute i would briefly inform you to all attendees that the admission of several pg and phd courses is now open and for the upcoming semester now coming to today's lecture as you know that today there will be two back to back lectures on design engineering and uh, embedded system the speaker of today's lectures uh, is uh, professor shankari prashun bhattacharya he is attached to our institute as adjunct professor earlier he served as executive director engineering r&d hindustan aeronautics limited hal india and he also served as adjunct professor at iit kharagpur from 2014 to 19 his expertise is mainly based on Uh, avionic system design electrical and power electronic system processor based hardware and software system design system integration quality management avionic uh, avionics design project management he got the award uh, uh, from government of india uh, and that was raksha mantri's award of excellence uh, hal excellence in design and from drdo he got the best paper on design on experiment in quest international seminar and professionally he is a member of aeronautical society of india his total experience is about 40 years in design engineering and management and he also uh, headed mission and combat system r and d center at uh, as general manager then as executive director engineering and r and d of hal and he retired in october 2017 in his credit there are about 23 aerospace aerospace electronic unit and major uh, aero system design and flying in aircraft like jaguar Mira, mirage hawk and helicopters major contribution of professor bhattacharya are first time uh, aesa radar integration in asia he certified rto os development avionics upgrade and electrical system design in aircraft he also worked extensively with international designers from uk france israel russia and usa he has been the key person in preparation and approval of software certification document for defense also he was involved in nal drdo and academic institutes in different capacities still he is also involved in those institutes and he Uh, deliver lectures in different academic and industrial platform so uh, now professor bhattacharya the stage is yours and you can start uh, today's seminar uh, thank you professor jit and welcome everybody professor jit has already told about the uh, purpose and objectives of gia uh, gis is i have joined here for a very specific purpose i have seen the country is moving country and whole world is going to a very big change in the technology particularly with the advent of artificial intelligence internet and etc the future is totally different than our present day and gis iasr has taken that step 
So with the changed scenario, changed uh, requirement, how it should be more and more objective oriented and futuristic uh, purpose. So in that way, I found the industry with about 40 years of experience. I could, I'm fortunate to see a lot of changes during our career and, and working with international people. I want to uh, share my experience and the futuristic uh, mission in the country. Okay, so I am going for a, a, a GIS IAS has taken up this futuristic state. I discussed with Professor Ajay Kumar Ray and my fellow colleagues, and I have seen they are more enthusiastic in the future than what is the traditional and going on. So the type of subjects, the type of technologies they have taken up are for a immense importance in the future. And I must say to all of the uh, uh, audience that this is a very good scope to be aligned with the future. Okay, okay that's why I have taken a subject, design engineering, which is, I have already received the question that what is user? So design engineering, it will be followed by embedded system. I will talk with the, my experience and my understanding of the subject during my career. Now, the first presentation will cover the first introduction that has already been given by Shenji, so I'm not going to cover this. Then coming design work to fundamentals, design process and evaluation, competency of a design engineer. Finally, finally, this is the thing which is most important that the future, what is the design engineer's requirement? What is design engineering? What just thinks a design engineering is. This is the most important thing. What is written in the book or what is that maybe very jargon of uh, words. But finally, what is it the industry wants? Because industry is the bridge between the design or and the user. So what design thinks? If I give a definition of a design engineer, it is a fusion of innovative mind and structured engineering methodologies. What is this? This means that it is like orchestra. You have seen that one song is being produced with so many musicians, so many uh, uh, vocalists and everybody is there, but one person he makes everything. So all the individual, this method of methods and etc. are to be fused. It is a nothing mixing. It is a nothing uh, hybridization. It is a fuse because it should be acceptable. It should be uh, uh, sweet to the ears of the audience. So there is the fusion. It is so design engineers that innovative mind, one good design engineer is can do like this, that he can fuse all the things, but you cannot do it haphazard. So there must be certain methodologies, certain engineering approaches, which should be guiding this innovative mind to bring out a particular product or system into reality. Now, what is the role of industry? What industry should do or what they are doing? Why Google is so important to us? Because they find out 
the where is the gap between the item available and the user the people requirement people most of the time people do not know even that there is a requirement only when it is be told to him it is found that there is a requirement so this gap analysis is the role of the industry apart from the gap analysis they should do provide the infrastructure they should try provide the resource what is the resource resources like good uh, facility proper lab proper uh, people man material and money these are the resources so industry's role is the gap analysis infrastructure resources now how you will you do when a industry industry is not a one person it is not like a science scientific uh, discovery that one person is doing so there are so many people so many systems so many outside uh, agencies who have to be become integrated with a focused goal it is something like uh, Uh, mahabharat pandavas that there is a judiciary is a king bhim arjun is the main warrior said and kurukshetra was the uh, followers so then it is a integrated team and that's why they could win all the way so it is a integrated approach there has to be a teamwork and most important thing is the user perspective what user think what user feel what users difficulties these are the things a design engineer must understand must recognize then only he can uh, do some successful uh, product structured process i have already told that nothing can be done hazardly they are like any music you are having so many steps starts from sapta shoot to the final all the things similarly there is a process whatever you want to invent whatever you want to design whatever you must follow a structured process and last but not the least what is that is unbiased evaluation what is evaluation that means you are testing you are finding out that yes it meets i should not be biased that oh this gentleman has done it or it is our dad we have done so much of uh, so we must clear it no it is something like whole year a student has uh, diligently uh, studied but ultimately the exam paper whatever this that evaluation is the final thing that should be unbiased so because then only if you do then only it will lead to a business success if there is no success in the design then the product it will die so this is that it has to be a approach where integration of people integration of systems integration of agencies everybody should be involved if i give it very a product is there are three things at the finally and all are having the equal uh, role one is the requirement which is provided by the user one is the technology that will be provided by the designer and industrialists will provide the business then only a product design of the product will be successful so business technology requirement these three pillars are the fundamentals of a design activity design output design engineering now question comes what is now the thing is coming design thinking 
design thinking it is a process that will not follow a particular straight graph it is a iterative process you have to continuously iterate you have to continuously act to plan accordingly you have to you have to do then you check it that what i have done it means then again you correct it that is the act again plan so this cycle you have to do so in this iterative process that team has to do so that you can understand the user what are the things these are i the following user users challenge assumptions who is thinks sometimes we assume things or the user may be thinking some uh, some assumptions so these assumptions are correct you must you 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 are assuming something that is today particular lot of assumptions things after some days this is no 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 this is not correct one is again another guideline is so what has come na it has come to assumption why let these assumptions they should challenge within themselves and final thing should come to the people instead of the assumptions are coming into the and the who are users who are the other side they are getting confused so that is not the thing it is the designer's job so there should be iterative process with the user so that how user is thinking how user is experience what are the risk what are his conditions he should understand during that period we assume things that assumptions we must see that yes these assumptions are correct accordingly we should redefine the problems we should create the function so problem is also not a static phenomena problem itself is a dynamic condition and this dynamism is the actually brings you to a successful solution otherwise the solutions will always become a intermediate and it will lead to confusion and the if it is a case of a industrial product you will see that the product dies very fast if you are give, making a car with certain assumptions that people will like this color and you have made that color and finally uh, that you have to see that that color of the car is people are really these assumption you have to continuously reiterate with the user with the thing so assumptions understanding the user and accordingly you change the problem problem is a dynamic and so solution when you are getting a solution you make a prototype of it then test evaluate like that so these are the five major stages one is the first one is called empathy empathy is user requirement user requirement and user experience user interface that means what user wants what is the experience he has what is the and how i will interface with him how we will come to know how we will interact with him second is problem definition so conti like i am telling you a user you are going to a market a shop and ask for a pen what we say as the user i need a blue pen blue gel uh, shopkeeper gives you 10 types 10 pens different and then you start selecting this all are up to gel pen now what is this things 
that means there are a lot of unstated uh, requirements you have and that moment you will see that the stated requirement is not important to you the unstated requirements you are selecting an item based on your unstated requirements so maybe the color of the pen maybe the uh, clip maybe the holding uh, conditions maybe the um, uh, some these are all the ten pens are having different specification though the requirement is same specification is different because there are a lot of your un unstated requirements there similarly if i go to a uh, restaurant and ask for a dish what i say i want a particular dish let's say chicken biryani and in that i say it should be less spicy less hot now it is the way what is meant by less but that fellow has to understand that is there are a lot of vague requirements now there comes in a product this is also thing it you want to uh, when you want to go for buying a, a car you will see that there are a lot of unstated and vague requirements you have that is only when you see suddenly uh, this dashboard is uh, looking like uh, slightly more round it would be fine it would be more it more less subjective words but these are also requirements we cannot say yeah, these are useless no then only a product becomes a user's uh, favorite so when a design engineer by interacting with the user by understanding his conditions by taking his risk factors he will uh, bring out a specification in the specification every details of the product will be listed and it will be again in the iterative process will be talked with the user and there comes the user experience user interactions and is technical specification is made and a proper technical specification a designer tech specification if you are if you can make which satisfies the user but this specification can only be user may ask sometimes during their interaction he can ask anything which may be conflicting which may be not possible to implement like one uh, uh, there there may be certain risk factors he may be asking a mobile battery should be uh, 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 connected uh, uh, separately that may be a risk factor so when a designer is making a specification then it is users input users role as well as the design conflicts technology conflicts other constraints are to be taken care of so specification when it is being made we say that 40% of the design work is over if you can make a really good technical engineering specific but one thing remember this is also a dynamic this cannot be a static specification with the during the process you have to keep your user into loop and continuously you have to change your specification type to time based on your new scenarios so designer specification problem definition which is telling the designer specification and also what type of technology i must use i am telling you a very simple thing how user with the user the system changes you have gone to a vegetable market 
a balance is being made and you are having a balance in the lab is it the same no because why now there in a vegetable market the weight 1 kg 2 kg this way and that is fixed the material is changing very whereas in the case of a lab probably when you are doing a that material is fixed and you are trying to weigh that and find out so there may be your balance should be made more after decimal maybe two or three digits when you are going to a so user conditions you are a designer of a, a balance then you have to see that what type of user is, uh, I, i am going to satisfy so accordingly i have to then in a case of a uh, vegetable market the material the balance the weight weight will be kept in the left side and the material will be the right side because normally the right hand people will uh, reduce or in, uh, increase the material, uh, material whereas in a lab the material will be in the left side and the right side weight will be vary so this is a very simple thing but you have to understand that that who is my user accordingly next step is idea or concept now you have got what i have to do you are having a visualization now you make the idea what you have to do there you have to see what is the technology planning what type of technologies are fit for this what type of uh, 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 most suitable technology technology suitability will be depend on the user's requirement and also the business potential and how much money i have spent that conflict management there will be lot of conflict like if you are a, in a uh, like if you are buying a car in india the roof is fixed and whereas if you are or there is a no trans transparency whereas the same car when it is in england you are having a transparent sheet why that because in our case it will be the sun will be too much and it will not be uh, comfortable for the passengers whereas there it will be a comfortable for the passengers so there we have to see according third is prototype engineering model prototype making i think that this is the thing everybody most of the time we start from user requirement and jump to the prototype making the in between the two steps we are not doing and here comes the design engineering design thinking and last is evaluation testing customer now i am up to the how it is actually implemented if you are having a what is the total uh, uh, life cycle the life cycle starts from the design, user requirement system concept system technical specification then i am taking as a one hardware computer system generally then hardware unit you have to develop in side that there will be electronic module or cars or uh, so modules it may be a power supply in a particular form the module is in somewhere it is a card for like this then pcb design fabrication assembly chassis design hardware design analysis and like what are the other than the electronics there are thermal emimc stress you have to see a product is not electronics a product is not electrical a product is interdisciplinary you are having everything should be built there even a cover design is also easy design everything is done everything is working but ultimately you have to give even the packaging is a very important thing 
so oh, you have to do all the tasks then in the meantime to test it test equipment development so test software development if you have to be a complicated system then that tests you need a particular type of software that based on white box testing black box testing module level testing component level testing you must have that different level no only when you have completed you now make a full unit let's say computer unit you got and now what type of application software you need you want that is based on your today you are having apps or otherwise in the different system you have to do graphic uh, software you may have to do the computational software like this to so application software development then good afternoon sir good afternoon so application software development next comes software testing then software ivnv what is that na it is a validation and verification integration and proving of system now your user requirement is already available your hardware unit is available your test hardware testing and test software has been made now you integrate all the things and this is a very very complicated task when that proof system proving is done you have to make all the documentation then only it will be certified for use so this is the total life cycle for the design and development now what is design thinking empathy i have told you certain things study interact and understand user this is how to study how you will interact how will understand because it is a continuous process i have already explained now the question is this how you will really interact how will you get the things from uh, user stated or stated and vague what are the first is user constraints and risk factors you try to understand that or using a what are the user is having a constraint let's say i am making a computer but the how the the particular type of a, a particular set of people i am making for and their height is not much but if somebody is the, the most mostly it is for the ladies then how i will make this so this constraint i have to consider similarly when if it is in a lab or when you are you are making a computer you should at a user will say no no sir i cannot give you so much of cooling today i cannot give you so much of power i cannot give you so much space now you have seen originally the computer used to be in a particular shape gradually gradually because of this it has become a uh, thing so that it can be put just in your uh, 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 desk but otherwise it used to earlier fully on the table and like this so these are the constraints space is a constraint weight may be a constraint wow. the uh, uh, don't you think that keyboard the way it has been made it was it has been made so that it becomes most uh, friendly to uh, user so these are the thing if the keyboard is in the other side say this is a keyboard i must keep anywhere it will work the user is not easily ergonomics you have to in a car you have to see that how much a distance you have to keep how much a distance you must keep so that he can comfortable so these are the things 
now comes functional requirement that is ultimately product is given what type of functions it should work it should provide you what functions to do to a mobile phone it started with the function only for talking then messaging now it is a everything you are doing internet you are doing video you are doing for camera you are doing um, film everything you are doing so gradually these are its functions now operational requirement and environment in which environment in operation what are the operational requirements operational requirements is and now how the let's say operation is to be done where the switches will be provided how the uh, apple and uh, other such we will not provide the charger the earlier chargers can be used for the uh, now so this is operation requirement that means the charger is the uh, Uh, this uh, why is to be made in such a way so that old charges can be used this is operational condition similarly field requirements if it is a very hot place let's say in the case of rajasthan in a desert when we going for certain uh, uh, test in the area force we were not getting a getting the power now so requirement now how you will cut, uh, do it how it contamination not only that field work it is very hot now your computer earlier every computer every item is to be any electronic used to be put in a Uh, uh, air condition uh, uh, place today it is being changed. Similarly, operational limitations, environmental uh, 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 environment of operation, atmospheric, static dynamic condition, magnetic, electro electric environment, medical. These are all can be done only when a very detailed class can be made. Similarly, there will be a quality requirement. What is what type of testing we have to do what type of reliability i want to do if it is a hardware we are doing 1 in 10 to the power 7 similarly failure always remember that is you have seen a, a small screw or rusted uh, fastener can lead to a very big uh, disaster similarly cyber security interface requirement io standards input sensors output drivers output systems these all are your electronics oriented so you can understand now i will go to similarly implementation requirement similarly physical and packaging requirement size shape volume constraints weight carriage delivery requirements pack, packing different packing means when you are delivering you are putting it in a pack packing the box probably how to do that is the packing and packaging means the all the system we require uh, for the computer every module everything and finally when it is a properly packaged uh, a product is see. safety requirements security requirements environmental requirements now specification just take a specification what are the specification of functional part now you see when i am putting it in writing you see that how many functions it has to do it has to do digital video generation digital graphic processing video video for format conversion video switching embedded generation display management navigation and guidance let's say the gps you are seeing in the mobile he has to do all these previous ones then only you can navigate gps we are uh, running but so many uh, functions he has to do there a lot of computer sets sensor management i have to work with sensor how 
particular sensor will be doing bus control, bus will data bus. You may have two, three different Ethernet, RS, lot of different, how you manage the, those functions are also a part of the uh, computer. Interface with various sensors and other units. Transmit and receive data from one unit to another unit. You have to, how to, it should be compatible, how it will be. Keyboard functions, touch functions. These are the things it has to decode and accordingly the operation should be done. Health of the computer, the failure management. So these are the general functions of a computer. But when you are writing, you will find that the, how big it is. And so many others are there. I have just brought. Similar the interface is a computer. If you see, there is a mission computer is in between. Now, if for a new unit, forget about the what is rated in these are the different units and it is talking to interfacing and all the data are coming there with different processing, different generation, display, the warning, all those things are being generated in the mission computer and then it is coming to the display. Sometimes it is going to different units for doing certain work. So this is the thing for different so many systems and you see that in the right side there are different types of bus. Now, when I am writing it into the, this specification, so this how specification is written. One after one functional specification, interface specification, input output interface, you see all the things are written that which are both way like MIL 5053 data bus, RA429 data bus, RS422 data bus, these are both way. Some are video which are coming as a input, which are going as a output. And so this type of discrete input, analog input, synchro input, so in one place, a person can understand that in my computer, these are the all input output I need. Now, physical characteristics. To give the right tier short, the particular industrial standard weight mounting. How will you mount it if it is to be mounted in a place in a uh, let's say car or in a train or in a uh, aeroplane? How it will be mounted or in your house if you need to a mounting? How it will be mounted that is also to be inside the chassis. How many slots are there? Like in your computer, how many uh, other than the motherboard, how many slots are there? How many cards, modules you can uh, accommodate? What type of connectors you are giving? How the PC board connected? This unit connectors means it is being interfaced with outside. So similarly, PC board test connector, video connector, mil 50 connector, these are the data bus connector like this. You have to define the physical connectors. Now, if it is a processor, a module, I am just giving some of the things. What is the processor is to be doing? What type of processor I must use? What will be the memory conditions? What will be the SD RAM conditions? NVM, non-volatile memory. All these things you have to very clearly bring out into the specification. Physical characteristics. Another, what are the things? One, that is grounding, how is to be done? Handle, how you will you handle, what type of handle it should have so that you can easily uh, put it or you can uh, take it out or you can uh, carry out this. Levels, even how you will write the level, what information that also must be uh, given. Some indicators, maybe some warning, maybe something like small indicator. So everything should be part of pulling. If it is a thing, what type of thermal uh, scenario it is there? What type? Even the color of the unit must be uh, defined. So you see the specification. So finally, what is coming? My system specification is the main thing. Then. From there, I will come performance requirement, 
then i will do the system design for performance requirement hardware design hardware testing and system design will define you yet yeah, system design will define you also the hardware design as well as software design. there is a slightly this basic of system design there will be two arrows one will be software design one will be hardware design then that both will go parallelly hardware design and hardware uh, software design then hardware software will be integrated then simulated test rig testing that means all the simulated conditions then off field integration field test now what is the life cycle process requirement captured hardware technical specification high level design detail design fabrication testing in the meantime some reviews changes major design in a uh, computer like that what are the major areas backplane motherboard design electronic component selection whatever apg and cpld design is there it is to be given electronic module design power supply design electric design electrical design emi mc design mechanical and vibration design thermal design packaging design each one is a number of classes are required how it is to be done now how the computer will look like these are the connectors this is the chassis and you see inside how it is there will be right side this eight slot back then that there is the motherboard what you people are normally and how many cards are there this full card half card so these are the different cards are there and out of that certain things will be user selectable user will like if you see in a dell you will they will ask you what type of configuration you want accordingly they will attach the things so processor selection now the way you are going to the module so you are to make a process will you select it what are the things you will decide whether it is esp or risc or mips i like that or then family which family you should take then whether it should be a processor or a microcontroller whether it is a chip or soft core particular everything are being decided based on certain criteria and that needs to be elaborately studied fixed point forty point support the prefer processor core the number of core requirement how many cores you require if it is a integrated modular architecture then how then architecture aspect like built in memory management built in interrupter controller so this in this way the processor is to be these are the major points for which the details are to be detailed criteria is not required to be studied but i have just given that what are the points see what are the architecture what are the pipeline stages that means throughput and etc processing power operating clock figures i may select a 1 gigahertz uh, processor but my requirement probably only 500 megahertz so why i unnecessarily i will select such a high one so in this way power dissipation probably by reducing the power uh, the uh, operating frequency i may have a better power dissipation so then bus speed what should be the bus speed what type of, that means what type of bus are uh, required in this so that an available form factor package type or supply voltage temperature is support my operating conditions may require a very wide temperature range then what type of screening level screening level means quality level similarly operating system support now i am deciding it now i have to i will must the what type of operating system i am using whether it is a real time operating system and what type of and what is the version whether my processor is supporting that similarly what are the critical and safety critical system so we have to know the failure and all this and particularly this is very important to maintain the processor how much maturity level it has reached similarly software support what type of development uh, environment 
ROS compiler, whether available, and all these things. Similarly, guideline of motherboard and backpen design, throughput, signal integrity. Signal integrity means when there is a backplane or motherboard, there must be that uh, signal free signal should be free from distortion. The backplane protocol, there are a lot of different VME64, uh, uh, so many different type of protocols uh, there, CPC. What is the reliability? Now, you see that in the right side, what are the steps, lines and steps? Circuit schematic, schematic electronic alley, PCB board dimension, design rules. You have to see because these are the yellow part are the layers. Uh, copper and uh, uh, layers. White portion that uh, routing is done. So many layer. Uh, let's say 16 or 18 layer, and how that should, where the how will be there, which type of signal, signal power should not be the same layer, because then there may be interference. So in this way, there are a lot of guidelines are there which can be done. Now, now the evaluation process starts. The first thing is this: what are the evaluation you do? Functional simulation and analysis. D rating analysis, D rating analysis is the fact of safety. If my component is 10 volt, I should not operate it for the 6 volt. That means 0.6 is the D rating. This is the way every component is having that what should be the most reliable conditions for D rating for using a thermal analysis. What is the maximum temperature it is reaching? How much time it is taking? Signal integrity analysis, I have already explained that yes, there is no distortion. Integrate power integrity, MIMC, reliability prediction, failure mode analysis. So these are the evaluation process. Now testing, we will do PCB level testing, hardware initial testing, power on self-test, beat, built-in testing. Hardware white box testing, which is the module level testing functional testing, loading of software, hardware black box testing. Software is there. Now I am doing the black box testing. Acceptance testing. This is the indication. This software means the unit is functional and simulated condition with all other units are this simulated condition and the test is being done that whereas in the right side actual units are being put uh, test is being done. So this is the system division. Now testing what should be this cutage? It should be capable of generation of the signals which is required for, for functionality. Similarly, acquisition of the unit, whatever the data or signals are coming, that acquisition should be there, equipment should be possible. Equipment, test equipment software, data analysis, data loader. Now you, from external, sometimes I have load from data, so data loader facility, graphic user interface, so then only you can interact with the machines, then result storage facility. So a test trick, a test equipment architecture should cover all these things. Now I am telling you what should be the qualities or competency for a design engineer. The first one is the frustration. You should not be happy. Whenever a user says, no, no, it's very good. And you, if you become happy, then your innovative mind is dying. So you have to find out, you have to, even if the user says everything is fine, and that is why people were very happy when they could speak in mobile uh, only. This phone, uh, yeah. But that frustration, that never be happy attitude has brought mobile today this level. Similarly, you must think out of box. 
that's why it is called in industry the wrong thinking out of 10 fellows everybody said this can be done in this way this way that suddenly one fellow says absolutely different and he breaks out the but that does not mean that intentionally you should say different you must have some idea behind it perseverance never say die you know edison after 10000 trial he told for uh, all electric bulb he told today i have proved that these 10000 of uh, methods do not work so that is the perseverance failure is a part of the game failure the things will not work you know that when a thing works the very first chance that means either it is a copy from the earlier ones or there is very big uh, uh, mistake or wrong is there inside which will uh, come in, in future so failures uh, learn how to accept the failures and underdog underdog means normally those who are the star performers they do not want to do all this the people who are underdog who are who are thinking and way probably they are not so successful initially but they bring out the real fantastic designs and this is if i say these three things are the just a quotation the public don't know what they want it's my job to tell them the first one hmm the never be happy frustration is the seed of a good idea and alpha edition told i have just found 10000 ways that go to work think that i have just managed it it is one hour and uh, one thing only i can say i know there will be lot of questions should come in this if there is no questions then probably my lecture is not a very effective lecture and if i get the questions i will be happy and this is the but this is a very big today's and futuristic i got a question that whether next 10 15 years 10 15 years this is the method is going to be in future not 10 15 years it is the thing because till 2000 10 15 concept was individually people were sitting in one one place and without integrated mind they were doing and lot of failures are coming if you see 747 and 787787 is a whatsapp here come and this they know not not the you an integrated mind all people should be integrated this is the us ui is the future and not only future it is the today's reality and it will lead to particularly the type of things technology are coming artificial intelligence and etc if you don't understand the uh, user you cannot make artificial intelligence because artificial intelligence you are trying to put uh, the algorithm of a user's mind into that so us ui is a regular is a talk of the day not only talk of the day subject of the day so i think that the first topic and uh, if anybody wants to have questions they can send it to my email also and uh, uh, i will try my best or if the gis uh, is or whatever the email is there they will forward me and i will reply i can reply directly okay so i think that uh, the first topic i could manage to complete lot of things could have been told as now
I will go for just I second the is check embedded system. It's hello, Professor Bhattacharya. You have to stop sharing and then you can share your next presentation. Uh, I am doing that stop sharing. I have done. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, by that time, Professor Bhattacharya will come back. He may got disconnected. So I would like to ask the attendees, if you have any question, you can directly ask question to Professor Bhattacharya when he will come back. Uh, I have allowed all of you to talk. Hello, attendees, if you have any question, you can directly ask. Or you can type your question in the question and answer section available in the uh, uh, just bottom, bottom of your uh, screen. So Professor Bhattacharya will answer all the questions. So if attendees have any question, they can ask. Yeah. Yeah, Professor Bhattacharya, are you there? Yes, I am there. So I am now doing... Hello, Professor Bhattacharya, can you... Hello, uh, can you hear uh, me? Hello. Yes, I am hearing you. Are you able to hear me? But your voice is very low. Anyway, you can share your screen, new screen, new presentation. Uh, yeah, I am doing that.
is it are you able to hear me yeah i, I can hear you but your screen is not visible just share your screen <coughs> I'm sharing, but why it is not coming? Let me go out and once again I start. What is happening? हेलो 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 प्रोफेसर भट्टाचार्य या इट्स कमिंग या लेट मी सी यस यस स्टार्ट या स्टार्ट या या सी स्टार्ट ओके नाउ द अर्लीएस्ट चैप्टर व्हाट वी हैव टॉपिक 1 व्हाट आई हैव स्टार्ट ट्राइड टू गिव अ क्लिम्स ऑफ हाउ द हार्डवेयर डिजाइन is done design thinking as well as hardware design basics uh, basic considerations i should not say design engineering of the whole hardware but how specification is made how the is implemented how that is done that level overview and glimpses now i am going to for embedded system if i make a continuity so i am taking the how the software is being so embedded system embedded system what is embedded embedded is uh, this word is very widely used but uh, i think that very few know that what is the meaning of embedded it is something like this that there is a hardware and when a particular of the same hardware when a particular type of uh, software is embedding embedded that means if it, if it is something like this that in a in a for uh, a bed it is not a mixing it is not a hybridization it is not a integration it is a embedding fixed and you are giving a particular type of software application software and based on that application software your a system works as a particular function it is something like a on a bed if you were uh, lying on a uh, on a particular bed that means you were embedded to that and it is your bed the moment it is changed in a hospital <laughs> next year another fellow comes it is his bed and all all the things the way the whole system uh, uh, is so this is why this that means as if hardware is a bed and on that You are putting it software, so software is embedded on that. 
so basically i am going to do that what is the definition of a embedded system overview fundamentals and software design process these are the things i will uh, what is embedded system embedded system in any computer system or the embedded process designed with a specific embedded software application so a software is put on a, that the same thing if it uh, uh, on a mobile when the particular software or camera is used it is a camera when it is when a particular software of uh, uh, speaking is used it is a phone so similarly when you want to see a particular operation for a film then it is a screen so this is the embedded so soft, based on the application software when it is getting embedded on a hardware the whole embedded system has intelligence embedded inside it for carry, carrying out predefined functions please remember you cannot say he is having a defined function because software is telling you software has been made based on that you cannot change it like a cycle that suddenly i will put put it uh, differently i will change you cannot so predefined function at a predefined timing repeatedly and correctly with or without human interference to may with the interference means through switches to touch screen you can interact with that even in automatic conditions it will do automatically after so much minute it will change from this to this one after one operations there are two types of major is this hard real time embedded system and soft real time embedded system what is hard today you people are uh, regulars in immunity hard immunity but similarly here also certain soft are being made in a way that if it fails or if it is a bug uh, or uh, suddenly uh, because functional this will be a disaster so the software is being made with all those conditions all those possibilities so that in a yet of the auto system if it is a fact system is uh something is uh, going wrong that software the whole the aircraft will go to crash like what happened to recently 737 max that one software in a particular condition uh, when if it uh, did it it uh, what wrongly and uh, the aircraft went to that crash simply digital if it is the engine control system totally computer uh, is operating functioning this there if there is also these are the hard real time that fits it is a very steady very robust and very real time software is to be generated to be developed some are soft real time let's say washing machine let's say like i am telling you navigation and analytic system in an aircraft if the navigation is slightly wrong that will not make so much a problem but probably that navigation software may be a hard real time if it is on a um, car or in a uh, train because if slightly something goes wrong navigation it will lead to a accident but it may not be so in a aircraft if it is going slightly away but it is not going to be come so these are the things. similarly mission system you are having certain mission that mission do not work so these are the soft real time embedded system now if there is a safety and security is uh, there then your system has to be very highly reliable mainly safety is the first priority you are saying that your mobile if it is does not work what will happen nothing will happen. but if a computer in uh, uh, in a 
मेडिकल ये इंस्ट्रूमेंट इफ इट डस नॉट वर्क और रॉन्गली पेशेंट विल डाइ सो रिलायबिलिटी सेफ्टी क्रिटिकल इज सो इन दैट व्हाट आर दैट देयर कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स दैट इफ इट इज सेफ्टी क्रिटिकल रिलायबिलिटी दैट इट हैज टू बी वेरी क्विक रिस्पांस सो दैट it becomes very fast stable that means when the data is changing in a case of a patient the thing is changing very fast so computer should read it compute it and uh, show the doctors uh, accordingly so it has to have a very high response fast response traceability everything it is a software characteristics that traceability should be there i will come back after what is this that is starting from user requirement to the up to this moment everything is logically connected then you must do independent verification validation iv and v what we were telling of critical software then operating system what type of operating system you are going to use surely you will not use uh, a window operating system which is not a real time conditions for a medical uh, operation of uh, equipment your probably a real time operating system is required that means with a defined time that or response is uh, uh, coming here you are put pressing one button and after that uh, you are waiting when uh, it will do all the things and uh, then only uh, your operation will show it cannot be so small food print of os flexible and reusable modules for updates now you should use that which are proven modules software modules object oriented modules that modules that codes should be used because this has already proven its maturity and the software should have very excessive documentation every detail should be there every reason should be written why you are using this particular so this is a very famous software documentation and certification standard that is called do 178b it is a and it should be open architecture open architecture means it should be reconfigurable redundant that means if one fails another should be take over immediately identifying that there is a failure i must take over like if you were uh, uh, enter into with a in an enemy territory your computer fails then it, then you will be shot down so your another computer or another should take over and take so that you can do your mission or you can do your work so that is the redundancy now what type of system architecture are there there are loaded systems it is not technology based the first one earlier one what we have told is the what type of uh, uh, system it should have now uh, uh, technology based loaded system you are having a house items you are working with a washing machine or with a one processor processor and uh, uh, it is uh, a embedded system is there very small so let me be a single processor whereas medium and high end based is that multi processor complex system they should have lot of uh free space so that with the time with the dynamism you can add modify and this is the functional uh like multi processor based complex system these systems generally use bus based architecture and data bus is a data bus video bus as per your requirement where in all the functional boards are interfaced with one another through a motherboard like a computer it is there that if for it may be a main processor it may be graphic processor 
it may be computational processor it may be a, another uh, a display processor so many things but on a single motherboard you are putting each one like in the hardware i have seen and everyone will have the software embedded so embedded software should be built on protected space domain as well as protected time domain there should be a space protected space domain that means every work or every function you are having a space availability must be have uh, there that your software can be put the proper place proper space is available it should not be that overloading or anything so it should be guaranteed space kernel memory separate stack for kernel service it should not be there on one thing like you are having number of a drive b drive c drive so that everywhere you can this is a certain method of protected space that i can put something and it might have will not interfere with the b type b drive eh? like that it will not do so this is the way separate stack data privacy and security so for data privacy and security this is one of the major thing that one should uh, one should not be going to another area your uh, let's say in your office you are having an internet you are having your office lab so both should be different because so that your by mistake your data should not be channelized to the internet and going to a public domain or some other person so totally it should be separate so it is called protected space domain second one is protected time domain that means every function must be guaranteed time is available that one function it should not be that another if it is a 20 millisecond operation and you have to do 10 operations you have to see that every one should not exceed 17 or 18 milliseconds then only you can say that a guaranteed resource available but every function if it needs every one one or two uh millisecond more then it will be say your main frame minor frame is 20 milliseconds you your one or two functions so guaranteed resource availability for this bounded kernel response time cpu time budget per address per task it should be i have to be slightly because now time is running out the shift system software development what type of software are we there are some examples i have given processor computer software development graphic display software de development sensor simulation data simulation data bus simulation of data bus transmission user interface software data acquisition analysis software specific uploading software health monitoring software these are some of the system softwares what are the design objective ultimately when i am developing a software i must have certain objective this is maintainability it should be easily understandable so it can easily attributed to design knowledge that means when i am doing some other one operation one function i want to do and it the whole software is written in such a way that it everything i have used this comments and in the comments i will write in such a way that afterwards if i want to modify this or anything it can be seen there reusability the things should be in a like in a object oriented uh, that particular modules software modules can be i can pick up and use for another job modularity it you the modularity always improves the maintainability so that in a module form each one is a module reliability 
I have already a that it must be everything should be predictable. The most or that a lot of uh, testings are being done, MCDC and etc. etc. So that reliability is ensured that suddenly some fault should not be generated. Testability that it should be testable because then only proper evaluation is done. So design challenges. Now the funny thing is what are the challenges? These are very good. safety and reliability. The moment you want to do anything reliable, probably your response may be slightly slower. But in a safety situation, safety conditions, your reliability, you have to have it. So this is a, there are a lot of this type of conflict will come when you are going to design. Now, how it will be done? There comes your uh, optimization, all these things. So, resource constraints. You are having one after one function, user is asking, your uh, system is asking for, but you are having a 20 milliseconds, 30 milliseconds, let's say, one main, main frame, a minor frame, and let's say uh, 20 milliseconds is your main frame. Now in that, you have to do all the things. You are having a limited, uh, your um, uh, memory, size, memory capacity is fixed. Now you want to do uh, download the whole map of the country. So these are the resource constraints. Predictable and repeatable. These are the things I have explained. Fault tolerant, fail safe. Fault tolerant means even if there is a, for some reasons, there is a fault occurs, it will not disturb or it will not uh, crash the system. The system will operate. So they are similarly fail safe. And if there is a failure is there, it will not lead to a unsafe condition or the redundancy like that you have to do. Let's say in an automatic flight control system, you have to have four channels simultaneously working. All computation, everything is being done. Only one channel is uh, giving you the result. Three are working, but sitting like a standby. Now, if one fails, automatically at that condition, in the hot standby condition, it takes over. So, it is a fail safe. Similarly, robust, that it should not be easily uh, modified, like in the case of a finance or anything. So, now there is an embedded system, there is a layer concept. The physical resource layer, where actual hardware devices are working. So for there you must have the, like, ADC, data bus, secure digital converter, all those things, that means this type of components, you are having the, next is driver stage. Driver, scheduler, this stage is the second, which is called the resource access layer. That means, no, I am able to use this resource that by the lower resource I can access my data or by it I can access, I can take there. Over that is the system service layer, that is different subsystems. They are talking to this different data bus or analog driver so that can one system, let's say here I have given INGPS. It is a system, it is a system. SMD is a display. They can easily go through this 5053 device. Where the sensor, he is talking, the alert to digital converter, through that he is going to the sensor. So this type. Of, and the top layer is the application layer, which is the functionality. So there are four layers, and here the advantage is this, when you are disturbing your application layer, the lower layers are minimum to minimum affected. The lowest layer will not be affected at all. The second lowest layer, 
maybe slide to access that slide uh, modify you require uh, system services layer it is the thing which is actually working uh, so so functional layer so there are four layer concepts so first thing again i am coming requirement analysis which is a very important stage what are the requirements analysis process what are the inputs inputs is system specification that means which will come as a process of the user's requirement then system specification is generated that is the thing is your one input another is so system specification is coming from the application point of view and system architecture is coming from the technology point of view so these two are being processed in the requirement requirement analysis process what we are getting as output user use case diagram use case description state diagram like this now design process what is the high level design detail design uh, detail level here again the process is system spec is a must high level design and along with this the requirement output is coming use case diagram use case description etc so these two are coming as a input to the high level detail design process what i am getting sequence diagram that means if we are having the 10 functions a 10 functional modules of a software now which one what type of sequence it should come so that is the sequence diagram apart now from sequence diagram and other things what we are doing class design class diagram state diagram these are the Process. These are all actually independent, uh, very long classes. Next is coming implementation, code of practice. You must have implementation. There must be a code of practice. You cannot just write somewhere, uh, particularly in an industrial phenomena. The company is having a code of practice. That how you will you write a code? It it is very clearly defined. The formatting, even the abbreviations. nomenclature even the if you want to write pressure it should be p capital or p small or p underscore that is defined and that is a standard ages so code of practice is a document you must have in an industry otherwise every individual will someone will write pressure is small p another will write capital p and when these two modules we want to uh, now implementation process and what we and input is what data which is out of the detail design process and ultimately we are creating the code units or code this is now we are going for integration and testing it is a software what are the different type of integration is required software software integration and test what is this now each module of software function modules are being in a fixed way so many modules uh, somebody is doing for the map somebody is doing for a particular picture somebody is all are integrated in a software software conditions you integrate that yes all this sequencing as per the class as per the actors all these things are working so everything so that is the first stage of the test software integration now after the software software integration when i found that okay one class with ten function or one class is uh, similarly Actually, one full function is. Uh, then it will be put on the hardware, and there I will get the simulated data, simulated inputs, like I have seen in the software integration tree. I will give, and I will see that yes, that my hardware 
in the meantime in the hardware what is required the all the device driver software all the uh, application layer software all the software are being prepared and test software everything has been done and now i have put it the things on a hardware test then we are coming to a big integration that means all the functions are operating with the various two operational conditions i can give it up okay now the ring integration then let's have final year to aircraft integration or field integration just field uh, integration and field conditions system all systems are together here you cannot let i am telling you in a aircraft i want to test a radar or uh, altitude, altitude uh, sensor in active aircraft you cannot test altitude at my age take to 1000 feet my sensor should work my software should work i cannot test it in uh, Uh, Apple era. There, I cannot make ten foot, ten point one, ten point two, ten point three. That I can. There, I may start at hundred feet, hundred, two hundred feet, three hundred feet, like that. I can go or fifty feet just maximum. That is also very difficult. Where is here? I give. like that that it is test from 2000 uh, i can give a 0.5 feet now the question then why it the uh, aircraft test is required aircraft test is required because that probably i not actual that is the actual behavior of the aircraft cannot be 100% directly either way the way that uh, the timing what is taking to change the data to earth may not be possible always so that dynamics is being in the actual test field test this is the traceability i told that first start from the system specification here you see the form part of the system this is software for which Here, use case with class requirement number. They come in five design: sequence diagram, class diagram, state diagram. Then detail design: class name, function name, code. Now you see a particular function is written in the system specification three point three point seven point one. One is called CCIP page. this is a function ccip is a particular attack how the bomb is to be dropped that page how it will be seen this is a function now what are the use cases use case diagram is one drop bomb in ccip in all modes attack mode this is the name then another state for so this is the continuity that if this is the function these are the use cases has been used then there is no algorithm for that requirement number in the srs we had identified why particular then high level design those sequence now this is a class diagram that means where i am seeing this is a called call file the as well as i had able to see so there is a class diagram in detail design system status indication function row to status in this way in the code so now you see that whole system specification if you want to know from system specification to code how the things have moved one after one one after one after and after level this is and what happens for that so if something is 
misbehaving or something is not working or something I need to change. You know, these people system to are you able to are able to work out the changes? So there comes the important factor. Traceability becomes top down and bottom up. That means here it is the top down. That means I started with the system specification and going back to the level of the code. The top down app. Whereas in a bottom up approach, I am having a code. I will see this code is being used in how many places. So if this code is any of the functions should make will be affected. I will know. So if you take this code, I must see that functions are getting disturbed. So in this way, there are two types of traceability are there, bottom up and top down. But top down approach is the most very detailed approach can be made top down. Because bottom up, it goes everywhere. Up gradually, gradually from the bottom, uh, yeah, it, uh, it is like a branches of the tree, it opens, handling the division. Only one step up, up is uh, feasible, maximum two steps. Now, verification validation. What are the inputs? What is verification? What is validation? We say verify, we say validate. Verify is a theoretical approach. I will analyze, I will see all the methodologies. This, that is verify. From the logic, this is a thing. Must be a validate means testing. Actually, I am putting it into the thing and see that testing is, result is as per my analysis. That is validate. Now, what are the inputs? System requirements, software requirements are architecture, traceability data, source code, execute object code. The person who wants to do the validation, he needs all these as an input. And process, the upper part is the verification. You will review, you will analyze all the requirements. Accordingly, the requirement, the software architecture has been made or not. Any excess thing has been done or not. Source code, output of the integration process. This will be the critical The validation, software testing, low-level testing, integration, software integration, and finally, output is the software verified SS and procedure software verified results. That is the codes and all these things. So, this is the process. Verification IVM now have the this, it should have an independent verification and validation also. Where the review of Software requirement specification, software design document, code walkthrough, these are the things that have to be done. And it is a process. So quality control will do as well as IVNB. IVNB should be a third party, independent party, who is not related to the design, who is not related to anyone. And the, the big cases, actually IVNB is being done by a different organization not together. Similar testing of use case, class, test reports, functional level, code coverage, static code coverage, then final recommendation for certification. All these things when it's done, then the certification issue comes. When a safety critical software, it is to be done by designer, DIVT designer should have a verification representative and they did independent. Now, in that case, there should be very important tools must be validated. 
the tools you are using you have used for uh, let's say automatic code uh, writer or uh, uh, some uh, other uh, type of uh, 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 graphic uh, tools those could yes these tools gives you accurate results otherwise you have written a, you you had given a for that tool to draw and that tool is drawing actually 5.1 cm the whole thing may be the design to be wrong because today different types of operations are there where from the drawing itself directly the things goes so tool validation is a very important thing. compiler validation you all understand this that actually compiler is converting into the machine language at a particular process the compiler is doing correctly or or it is where throwing some some mistakes are doing or something is omitted or something is added then the whole your you have written a very good uh, software but your because of the compiler the machine is uh, doing nonsense object code verification obviously that uh, finally object code is doing then identification of test cases for 100% coverage of module level complete dynamic real time testing on a certified testing this is a very dynamic real time testing that means actual operational conditions if you are uh, uh, driving with your uh, gps uh, and gps is telling that after half a kilometer uh, there is obstruction and if it is actually in the quarter kilometer then what will happen so you uh, software must be tested in those op actual operation condition the if i working with a 60 km speed then it is it changing so fast it is i am getting otherwise uh, it is or it is showing me uh, that actually when it is uh, detecting uh, half kilometer i am getting uh, the to come to me by that time it is changing so so those type of real time testing is required another one i have not uh, that functions mathematical functions must be must be checked let's say syntax Why so many mathematical functions are available in the uh, functional modules, functional thing, and we straight away we take it. But maybe the trainings are very uh, 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 not accurate enough. Let's say I am telling you somewhere you are having a situation. that uh, uh sign uh, uh, 90 by cos 90 is 1 by 0 now the question is this if it is a tan condition what will happen divided by 0 computer will be totally uh, in problem so is it giving properly then how will you make all those things to do properly verify so there are two types of uh, software one is the critical software where the every stage must be checked which are the critical software which are the non critical software you can skip certain changes and functional things see that your operating conditions it is worth so because anything if you do if you think that i will do everything like a critical software then it will be too costly then it will be not be business uh, potential will be very bad
in this way different requirements we i have uh, did that if it is a safety critical then what for um, uh, uh, requirement what you should do as a part of testing is critical or if it is a non critical what the requirement document test coverage feasibility tool validation compiler validation object code verification art certification independent and coverage so this is a thing. now best practices must guidelines should be uh, with the development standards development approach and open standards adhere to open standards such as eric 653 eric 653 is a standard for operating system real time operating system then spatial and temporal partitions based on software applications i'm i am i have to run fast best practices model development traditional approach design code verify and design verify that it generates automatic code and help in Production, individual evaluation, software development life cycle, use of formal method of software certification, real time operating system, and centralized configuration management. This is one thing you must have a configuration management for a good software practice as a software practice. What are the challenges? I have told slightly that size and complexity is a very pot, very big challenge. Development effort. and development cost and time these are the software development challenges verification effort and handling intellectual property so these are the critical uh, important software these are the challenges we are getting giving this basic architecture like the interface module in the left side the module so sensor data is coming and control and command is coming in the left side data is coming through sensor then you are generating the graphics and display so this is the thing and you are it is cut on the display for that you are seeing so this is the basic application how one is the processing data processing one is the user interface and finally graphic generation and display model the graphics the library this is a particular different graphic software design implementation display leads is were used so, this is one very important uh, that you must optimally use the graphic controller memory for static graphic object graphic controller memory then maps are constructed as tiles of textures and reuse from graphics hardware memory so these are the certain things i am just giving as an example these are the this a very detailed uh, class so what now there is a art artos artos i think you will know real time operating system every operation is in a proper and how the artos use hardware platform over and above that which artos is what doing bsp bsp means a board support package that means you are having a particular graphics board they are having lot of hardware lot of this so device drivers and board support package these components are also to be software board support package are required so those are the things the core kernel apex interface and application different different Now separate of separation of application shared libraries artos kernel in memory fault isolation the restricted io access for the application to avoid invalid access of io i have already explained earlier that one every io should be very restricted way so that one application should not be jumped from navigation to combat or communication is going to if there is a requirement that will go to the kernel system performance accurate scheduling of partitions partitioning 
time partitioning, space partitioning. This is very important. Mm. And application task within partition based on environment. Deterministic response. This is the thing. Why real time operating system? It is a real deterministic response. I must get to otherwise I am flying and my uh, continuously my uh, position is changing. And if that takes uh, one minute to come back, that means by this time uh, uh, what I am seeing and where I am positioned is widely different. So deterministic response should be there. Six, six, five, three standards must be this type of uh, uh, thing. Complexity of present day avionics system. So whatever systems calls for enhanced processing capability. Now it is a huge amount of processing capability. Even in a mission, uh, in a uh, your uh, mobile phone, the amount of processing it requires, it is a huge. So there are multi-core uh, CPUs are required. CPUs are used. Then there may be symmetric multiprocessing, asymmetric multiprocessing, interprocessor communication, support for core and interrupt affinity. This is a very interrupt is a one of the major uh, role plays support of legacy applications in multi-core system. So. UML. These are some uh, uh, software package which are very well. Real time artisan is real time studio. LDR is a test uh, dynamic and static dynamic for software module. CC plus compiler. Emulators for hardware software integration debugging. Clear case is a configuration management tools like that. OpenGL for the graphics. GCC plus for system application. Lab view for data acquisition and analysis software with the test link you can use. GIS is digitization of maps. Uh, like uh, uh, if you want to develop a software for this GPS uh, map, uh, you can uh, you have to digitization of maps is for the GIS software. Then grab uh, nav software for the DGPS. That means your gyro position where you are for that you need processing you need for that this so this is the more or less uh, i have given you the overall and how the whole hardware as well as the software embedded systems are being designed and this is a very wide because every one is a out of this at least three to four major subjects can be done and how the process. So I can tell you if any questions are there, these questions may be given to my email ID. My email ID is SPB Bhattacharya B H A T T A C H A R Y A at the red gmail.com. Once again, SP. B again B H A T T A C H A R Y A at the rate Gmail dot com. And my phone number is already there. So it is direct discussions. My talk. I think that uh, I ran quite fast because this was a more of an overall view I wanted to give. And that's all for the day. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. I am here. So ah. thank you for nice and uh, very detailed presentation on uh, embedded design. And engineering design. So I let me see is is there, if there are any questions from the audience. Uh, 
yeah attendees if you want you can directly question uh, you can forward your question to professor bhattacharya otherwise you can type uh, so far there is no question from the attendees so yeah let me wait for let us wait one or two minutes if there is any question from the attendees yeah one question is from uh, uh, from Bhas bhaskar roy he said that can you share the video recording link with us or ppt yes definitely uh, bhaskar um, our video recording is already live in facebook and also in our youtube channel you will within two days you will get the video enter video uh, and also if you want ppt so please uh, send your email id so that we can send the so that professor bhattacharya can directly send you uh, ppt file to you so uh, professor bhattacharya can you share your email id with the audience uh, attendees i have just now told it okay. s p b b h a t t a c h a r y a at the rate gmail.com just only thing is this uh, remember sp b b it should not be only sp bhattacharya ne the email id is sp b bhattacharya okay okay so uh, there is no more question till now so we already have uh, 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 past it our schedule time also so mm. anyway i would like to thank all the attendees for their time and for joining this uh, webinar definitely you will be in touch uh, with professor bhattacharya through this email and any kind of uh, doubts or uh, questions in future you can clarify you can discuss with uh, professor bhattacharya he will be available on email and uh, you can also be only one thing i just want to uh, add to yes, prasajit that yes, this yes. type of things will be part of our sensor and iot these will be in details it will be taught right the hardware uh, how iot in the iot these things will be used that how iot design will be there in the sensor and iot these will be very much uh, this and we will teach in a manner that all it should not be limited to a particular type of application it should it will be done the across the any type of electronic module whether it is a human uh, uh, machine interface or it will be with the sensor uh, interface or it is in a computational uh, software or the hardware how the hardware will be uh, considered these all will be the part of our sensor and iot session yes yes so on this note uh, shall we uh, log off for today's session tomorrow there will be another webinar uh, so you must join this webinar at the same time 3 pm so thank you professor bhattacharya for your time and such a wonderful uh, lecture so on behalf of our uh, institute i would like to thank all of you so we shall uh, end our session uh, here so thank you thank you very much sir thank you all and thank you very much okay okay thank you for taking the labor and effort yeah. and also please convey my thanks to manjari and others who have supported from the behind and okay. shubhankar without any hey, shubhankar is the main one of yes. the main uh, please convey my thanks to shubhankar sure. sure thank you thank, thank you. you sir okay bye bye thank you bye